Hello everyone, this is Ali and welcome to my channel. This is another video of my CCNA series. If you would like to follow along, hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notified about new videos. In this video, we're going to be talking about the TCP IP layer and the IPv4 addresses. We're going to be talking about the internet protocol, the TCP IP model, internet layer, the network addressing, IPv4, private and public addresses, and we're going to be doing a demo on Packet Tracer. So the internet protocol, or IP, is a protocol for communicating over the internet. The word protocol means a way or a method, like an official method of doing something. So each device needs an IP address to communicate with other devices over the internet. And this IP is an identifier of the device on the network. So no two devices can have the same IP on the, on the, on the same network. And the IP is used for delivering packets from the source to the destination. As you can see here in the layer 3 packet, we have an IP header. Inside the IP header, along with other information, we have a source IP and a destination IP so that it knows where it's going and where it is coming from. So the internet layer in the TCP IP model is the same as the network layer in the OSI model. We say layer three addressing according to the OSI model, because here it's number three, the network layer. Uh, it is where we have the IP addresses and it is used or its responsibility is for transporting packets from the source to the destination from a network over the internet to another network. So we'll talk about the network addressing. We have IPv4. We just say usually an IP address, but it's actually an IPv4 for, uh, which means version four. There is the successor um, version IPv6. I'm not sure what happened to IPv5, but IPv4 is the most common one. Everybody's using IPv4. Uh, even though there are successful deployments of IPv6, but we're still in IPv4. Uh, it's going to be a long time till the internet is fully on IP version 6. But IPv4 is a 32-bit address space. That means we have 2 to the power 32 uh, unique addresses. And this number is about 4,294,900,000 plus. And it is, the IPv4 is represented in a dotted decimal notation. An example is 192.168.100.100. So every one of these decimal numbers is 8 bits. 4, 8 bits is 32 bit total address. So the IP address consists of a network portion and a host portion. And how do we know which, um, which portion of the IP address represents the network and which represents the host is all depending on this subnet mask. This number here, slash 24, is the subnet mask. This is, an, this is going to be another video to uh, get to know subnet masks uh, for the IP addresses. For an example, a network address 192.168.1.0 slash 24 it can have 254 addresses from dot one to dot two five four. That means we have we can have 254 devices on this local area network or in this IP address uh, range. The first one, the zero, is always the network address, and the last one, two five five, is a broadcast. It's called broadcast. That is for um, communicating from one device to all other devices on the network. This is called a broadcast. So the first one can be used for a uh, device. It's just a network address. And the last one can be used on a device as well. So you will have from 0 to 255, 256 minus 2, this one and this one, you'll have 254 addresses you can use on devices and one of those devices is the gateway 
we will get to know the gateway in a bit. So IPv4 has classes. All these numbers, 8-bit numbers from 0 to 255, 0 to 255, 0 to 255, they're divided into classes, class A, everything from 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way to 1, 2, 7, dot 255, 255, 255. And how did they get this number? The leading bit has to be a 0. So those 8 bits, they're either every bit is a 0 or a 1. So if they're all zeros, that means the number, the decimal number is zero. If they're all ones except this one, which is specified as class A, this one has to be zero, the leading bit, you end up with 127 dot whatever, whatever, whatever. And how did I get this number? This is how you add, this is the equivalent decimal uh, numbers for these bits. So two to the power zero is one, two to the power 1 is 2, 2 to the power 2 is 4, 2 to the power 3 is 8. So you see the number is multiplying by 2. And the last one is 128. So if this is 0, that means and uh, the rest can be zeros or all the way to 1s. This will give us the total of 127. Class B. The leading bits are 1 and 0, so 128 and this one that is equivalent to 64 has to be 0, so 128 plus either zeros or either all 1s, we get to 191.255.255.255. Uh, if they're all 1s at the end of the range, then class C from this number or this address to this address. Leading bits are 1, 1, 0. Then class D, leading bits are 1, 1, 1, 0. And class E, 1, 1, 1, 1 are the leading bits. So of course, not all of these IPs can be used in a local area network or on the internet. Uh, for example, class D is used for multicast. See how broadcast is communicating from one device to all other devices on the network, multicast is used for one to many or many to many. Uh, so you won't be seeing this on a device on a computer. And class E is for future use, for testing. I have never seen a class E anywhere. I have never used it. But so we end up with class A, B, and C. All these ranges um, we have classifying we have further classifying some are private and some are public addresses the private addresses are defined in RFC 1918 or request for comments which are like standardization um, or documents for like standards you can read this on the internet RFC 1918 this is um, what specifies the private addresses that you can use inside a local area network Inside the class A, we have the range from 10, 0, 0, 0, all the way to 10.255.255.255. That will give us 16,777,000 plus hosts. That means you can have more than 16 million devices if you are using this range. In class B, anything from... Um, 172.16.0.0 all the way to 172.31, 255, 255. That is more than 1 million hosts. And then class C, uh, this is class B, and then class C from 1 and 2, 1, 6, 8, 0, 0, to 1, 9, 2, 1, 6, 8, 255, 255, about 65,536 hosts. And this is class, class C is what you usually see in a home network. Well, you can use it in a business, of course, but this is what comes in um, when you order a, um, a modem or a router from your uh, internet service provider. It will You'll have a Wi-Fi network, for example, on this uh, class range. And you have the public addresses that are routable on the internet. For example, right here in the inside interface of the router and the inside devices in the LAN, they are using a private address, the router, 
has an IP address, uh, the router inside interface uh, has an IP address of 172.20.1.1 slash 24. And this is a class B address class B private address and then the devices inside are all on the same network dot 10 dot 11 dot 12 so all these devices need a gateway so this router right here is called a gateway for these devices all the computers inside needs a gateway to know how to get to the internet and then the router on the outside interface will have a public IP for example 11.12.13.14 this is just an example and this is how these devices get to the internet. Something happens in the inside the the, the router. And in technical terms, the address here gets translated to this public IP, and it goes across the internet. And uh, we're gonna do a quick demo here. On I'm gonna open Packet Tracer. I prepared a little topology here. So a router here and we have a local area network. We're gonna set up the IPs of the devices and we're gonna set up the IP on the router. And this will be the gateway for these devices. And then we have another network here on this side, um, another network, another LAN, another addressing. We're gonna set up the IP on the inside interface of the router and IPs on the devices. And we're gonna test a ping between the two networks so these two routers now are now are connected with a cable um, just for the sake of the of the video this can be let's say represented by a cloud that means they are connected through the internet not specifically a, a direct cable and uh, I'm just gonna remove the port label just to make it less cluttery. So the configuration in between the routers is not for this video. There has to be some configurations to let the communications um, between the two devices happen, but we're gonna do the configuration of the inside network. So I'll start at PC zero, for example. I'll go to desktop, IP configurations, and I'm gonna put the IP address one and two and six eight. 100.10 and I'm gonna set a gateway 1 and 2 168.100.1 so just like here I labeled it and PC1 I think I configured that before dot 11 I'm gonna keep PC1 open right here and then PC2 this is on the other network the 192.168.50 network so I'll put that IP address 50.10 and the gateway will be 192.168.50.1 which is the IP address of the router here the inside IP address and I'm not sure if I kept PC3 configured already no I'll add that .50.11 and the gateway is 192.168.50.1 okay this is ready and now i'm going to open router zero i'm going to go to the I'm just going to make sure this is the largest font okay I'm on the largest font. Okay, I'll open this again. So on router zero, I'm gonna go to this interface, which was gigabit zero zero configure terminal. Interface gigabit ethernet zero zero. And I'm gonna set an IP address, which will be the gateway for these devices. IP address, this is the command. And then you enter the IP address 192.168.100.1 and followed by the subnet mask, which will be 255.255.255.0. I'll press enter. Now we have an IP address on the interface, but 
on the router the interface is um, off by default is shut down so we have to say no shut down and notice the light here if i press enter it will come up and it will tell you interface gigabit zero zero change state to up and i will go to the other router on the other side Uh, press enter, enable, configure terminal, interface, gigabit ethernet, zero, zero. IP address, one and two, one, six, eight, dot, fifty, dot, one, two, five, five, two, five, five, two, five, five, dot, zero. And no shutdown. So the network is up, both sides are um, configure with a gateway so I'm gonna open PC0 right here which is on this network the 192.168.1 100 uh, zero I'm gonna open command prompt I'm gonna open PC3 command prompt I was doing some testing before to make sure we get a clean working lab and I'm going to ping from this network all the way across the internet to this uh, network. So from PC3 right here to PC0. I will ping 192.168.100.10. So the IP address of this device. So ping is for testing connectivity. If we have a reply from PC0 all the way back over the internet, that means we have connectivity. We'll ping. The first one will be lost usually, and then we have a reply from PC0 all the way over here. Now we're going to ping from PC0 to the other side 192.168.50.10 or 11 and expand that enter and we have a reply from PC3 so the ping is just testing connectivity it can be any type of communication you can have a server here we can have a web server for example google.com can be here and this computer here can open a browser for example and go to www.google.com and this connection will go over the internet to the router over the internet to the other router to the destination network to that server if it's running here and then the request will come back and this was a summary uh, of TCP IP internet layer and the IPv4 addresses. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see new videos in the series. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.